Once you have your stencil the way you'd like it to look, it's time to put it on the leather. First thing you want to do is wet the leather down as it's going to need to be damp in order for you to transfer the image properly. I recorded this first bit and it came out so well I didn't want to redo it. So I usually use a sock to dampen the leather. And the reason for that is my kids tend to lose their pairs and they grow out of them. So I have an abundance of socks floating around. Not only that, they usually have a moisture wicking material, so they'll soak up a lot. Also, they'll keep the moisture trap between your fingers, so you can hold a lot of the water inside the sock as you're getting ready to wet the leather down. After you get it sufficiently wet, let it dry for a little bit, usually about 10 minutes or so. It does tend to dry faster on the edges, so you may have to add a little bit more water near the edges to even everything out, and to give you a little more time while you're transferring your stencil. After all that's done and you're ready to reattach your stencil, make sure it's nice and secure. It's not going to slide around while you're transferring. Once that's all done, then you'll want to get something to transfer the image over. You can use all kinds of things for this. You could use a pen with a ballpoint, a scratch all, a ballpoint stylus. You could use a stylus from your phone if it has one. You could use a stylus from your Nintendo DS. Really anything with a fine point. I'm using this stylus that has a curved point. I don't know why it has a curved point. If you can tell me why on the intranet in the comment section, that would be great. I don't know the names of most of the tools that I use. I was self-taught by others. Uh, that might sound really weird, but basically, thanks to the magic of YouTube and articles on the internet, I took a long time just kind of browsing through things and reading any article I could get my hands on. There wasn't a lot of visual stuff when I first started, except for out of old books and magazines. Honestly, those videos that Tandy puts out on here, they tell you everything you really need to know to do this type of leather tooling. It's the same thing, it's just all of theirs are floral. So I like to do pictures and scenes. I apologize, it does get blurry here for a little bit. It does clear up, I'm not exactly sure when. I think it's like 302 or something. Anyways, with pictures and scenes, you'll end up using a lot more tools to achieve certain types of textures and put shadows in certain places. My goal is to show how different tools can achieve certain textures and different ways you can use tools that have other purposes. I'll be covering that in detail as I add videos to the channel. In this series of videos, I'll just be using the beveler and the stylus. I'll have three different types of bevelers, but they'll all have the same type of texture. They're a set and meant to be used together. I'll be covering those in more detail in the next video. I'll also be using a swivel knife in this project, but I'll be using a filigree blade, which is just slightly angled, whereas a regular swivel knife blade would be straight. And I'll show some images to clarify the difference. While well, going over the image with the stylus, you want to make sure that you're cautious and you're aware of hard spots. These would be from like blemishes or or scars in the leather. It'll just be spots where it's not wanting to compress and it might force you out of your line. So that's something to be aware of when you're transferring. I'm doing this fairly quickly. This is sped up I think two times, but this is usually the fastest part. I know where all the lines are supposed to be. I just need to go over them as accurately as I can. And you can add a little more detail at this stage if you're using a fine point. Clean up the lines a little bit if they're off. Just kind of make mental notes as you're going through. It's also helpful to keep the picture next to you. I have the tablet on right next to me so I can see all the lines that I need to add and any details that I may have missed when I was tracing. So I just want to clarify, I don't know if I mentioned this in the last video, I'm in no way a professional leather worker. I've just been doing tooling for uh, about four or five years now. So I'm fairly new at this myself. That's part of the reason that I wanted to label this learning leather together. So in the comments, you guys can post anything that I may have missed or different techniques that I might be doing wrong. And then I'll research that and do a video about that so we can try and help people get better at leather working and the art that they produce. While well, going over the stencil, I'm using a little more pressure than you'd normally use when using like a pencil. About enough to break the tip on a number two, I guess. On the detail lines, I might not use as much pressure, so I can differentiate them while I'm tooling with the swivel knife. If you end up going off the line, it's not a big deal at this point, because when you go over it with the swivel knife, it should lift out. If it's off, you just gotta remember to correct it when you're cutting the line in. It can be easy to go on autopilot and just carve all the lines you see, but it can also screw the image up a little bit if you end up going over it multiple times with the stylus close together. Leather tooling like this can be broken down into three different parts. Lines, shadows, and textures. 
The lines make up the entire image, but they don't really provide any sort of depth to the image. They might outline areas like the parts on Mario's hat where those two circles are, or the little bits on his brim, while other ones make up the outlines. Usually the outlines will be a little thicker, however as they overlap like they do on Mario's hat, they might taper out, giving you a transition of one surface to another. Shadows can be broken up into two categories. You have edge shadows, which would make up the edges around a surface, giving the illusion that one layer is higher than the other. Since you're trying to make a two-dimensional object appear three-dimensional, you're going to add shadows to layers to make them look like they're higher than the other. So all of Mario's head is the best example, as it's going to have a shadow that goes all the way around it as it's closest. The ear tucks over the top of the hat, so that'll be closer, so it'll have a shadow over the top of it. But as it goes over his hair, the shadow will transition and I'll go more into detail on that when we go over the other video. The other shadow would be a surface shadow. For example, a divot in a piece of cloth wouldn't be necessarily a fold, so it wouldn't have a hard edge showing you that it's rolling back and then layering back out, but just like a little divot. So you'd use different tools to get different effects of shadows, because in leatherworking, most of the shadows are just depth in the leather, or texturing tools, which is the third thing, and that's what really brings the image to life. That's done with usually background tools or uh, tools meant specifically for texturing and you can use all kinds of different things for this it all just depends on what you're trying to achieve and again I'll cover those in another video I picked this image because it's pretty simple but a cool image so it doesn't have any real textures I did put some accent cuts to give the illusion of a transition edge like on his nose there's a little curved line because Mario has a flat nose on top because it's rounded on the bottom uh, I also put some markings on the gloves to accent his knuckles and on the turtles feet well I didn't do this the artist did this these are just areas where I didn't necessarily give a shadow, but I just put lines in. I really wanted to showcase the fact that you don't need a whole lot of tools to do a lot of the art that you can do on leather. Unless you're getting way into texturing or using stamping. Geometric stamping is very popular in leatherworking. I don't have the patience for geometric stamping, but I'll do a video on that. There's border tools, there's background tools, there's lettering tools, there's basket weaves. So there's all kinds of things that I want to go into detail on in the future. As I'm finishing up, I tend to move the stencil around and pick it up and give it a different orientation to get a reflection on the stencil. This allows me to see all the lines that I've gone over and it really makes the lines that I haven't gone over stand out, which is helpful for finishing out. At the end, I make sure that I always leave one side taped, so same as when I'm doing the initial trace, I don't take the stencil off and then realize I've missed a few lines and I want them to be perfect. Always leave one side taped. It'll save you a hassle in the long run. Well, I think that's all I can think of to go over for this one. So I'm going to let the time lapse play out and let you guys listen to some sweet, sweet, non-copyrighted YouTube music. Please enjoy that. And if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram at Halfcock Leatherwork. And I also live stream on Twitch under Halfcocked Creations. In addition to the work I have here on YouTube, I'll have different works on my Instagram as well as the ones that I've done here and on Twitch. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of the video.